Brenda Lane. Hello, everybody. It is six minutes after three o'clock, and I'm so glad to have you along today because today we're going to be talking about Region 4 Area Aging uh, Agency on Aging and two very special award winners who uh, received some... Uh, uh, recognition not too long ago. Today, we're going to talk to the caregiver of the year and the centenarian of the year along with their care manager. So, uh, here to tell us a little bit more about the Area Agency on Aging and these awards in particular, Don Tyler is here today, Director of Care Management. Don, thank you so much for, for coming in and kind of filling in last minute for Christine Van Lenningham. We appreciate that. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks so much for having us. These were two special awards that we offered. Uh, we had a 40th anniversary of the Area Agency on Aging last year. So I we can't believe it's been 40 years. 40 years. How many of those years have you worked at the Area Agency? I've only been in Michigan for seven years. So okay. Just a, just a pinch. All right. That's still, that's a long time these yeah. days at one at one job, isn't it? I'm sorry, what were you saying, Christine? I've been there for 17 years. All right, Christina Rita is here as well, and she is a care manager. And uh, our caregiver of the year is we're going to announce in just a minute. So, uh, But go ahead and tell me a little bit more about the the, the uh, Area Agency on Aging, a little bit about uh, products and services, you know, what you do and what you provide in the community, and then a little bit more about these special awards. Great. Thanks, Brenda. We've got the Area Agency on Aging serves adults of all ages and all income levels. We have jobs. We have home care. We have... Have uh, foster grandparents, uh, lot, just a variety of programs and services for people of all ages and all income levels. That's kind of our mantra. End users normally are seniors and the disabled primarily. Is that correct? Sure. But the, then you're working a lot with caregivers, family members, right? Providing uh, vendors to provide services. Right? right. The main focus where Christine and I work in the care management department, we uh, we work to keep people at home and out of nursing homes. That's our primary goal. It's not that we're against nursing homes. Mm -hmm. We appreciate nursing homes and hospitals, but our goal is to try to support people in the community living in their own home or in assisted living or in adult foster care to keep people at home. And again, that's a, that's adults of all ages. So can be in their 60s, 70s, can be in their 30s and 40s with some other disabilities. So in essence, when someone contacts you, and it may be for services for themselves or for a loved one or a neighbor or someone that they're caring for, you would get, get some information. In other words, probably kind of take a little analysis of the situation, find out what services that person might be in need of, and then match them up with some of the vendors that you work with that provide those services, right? That's a very a great assessment of what we do. Absolutely. We talk to people on the phone. We'll go out and meet with them in their own living room and find out what they need and get the specific support that that person or that family needs. All right. And now you're not a governmental agency. And I know that that is one of the myths that's out there. Some people think that you're a government agency, right? Right. We're just a private nonprofit agency. There are places like ours all throughout Michigan and all throughout the nation. So if you need services like this for anybody here or elsewhere, Please call us and we'll connect you. Mm -hmm. It sounds so official, the name. You know, it's Region 4, Area Agency on Aging. So are there other regions then in the state that each have their own uh, agency? There are. Uh, Region 4 just covers Barry and Cass and Van Buren. Okay. And we kept the number four in part of our name. Yeah. Um, but there are there are actually, there are like 16 area agencies on aging mm -hmm. throughout Michigan. All right. So as part of your 40th anniversary, uh, these are first ever awards in these categories. Is that right? They were. We wanted to do something special and we wanted to honor some people. So we had some um, competitions and had people write in. And Carl, who's with us today, to, uh took the caregiver of the year award just carl stanisowski did i say that right stanzanowski stanzanowski okay i want to make sure to say your name right carl stanzanowski okay so there's an n in there that i didn't put in so that's my fault i didn't type it right uh and so tell me about the uh the uh category this caregiver of the year category what what was the criteria what were you looking for in this competition we were looking for someone who had done who was in a caregiving role whether it was their spouse their parent a sibling a child um, mm -hmm. someone who had done something as a caregiver a lot of times people don't identify themselves as a caregiver they think well that's just my mom that's just my sister that's what i'm supposed to do we in the business recognize that those efforts are huge um, and what people contribute is it, is um, gives a lot to that person. It's not always formal care. It's the informal care from the friends and family that matter the most. So Christina Rita is here as well, care manager. And you said, how long have you been with the area agency? 17 years. 17 years. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, it, you must enjoy your work to stay there for so long. I do. Um, I enjoy the variety that it presents. It presents a lot of challenges. I enjoy going into people's homes and not being 
in an office environment all of the time. There's a lot of flexibility, and I get to meet a lot of terrific people and and put happy smiles on people's faces. Now, you're here today with Carl, who's the caregiver of the year, because you are his uh, care manager, is that I correct? I was his wife's care manager. You're his wife's, okay. And so that you guys kind of win this together in a way, right? Correct. Uh, because you work together. All right, well, it's time for a break. We're going to come back after the break, and Carl, I'm going to let you tell your story, if that's all right. Break. Yeah, after the commercial break. Okay. Yeah, so you uh, can my just story. What kind of story? Do you you want can to just hear? relax. What kind of story? Well, you you can tell us the story however you want. I already know you're a comedian, so if you want to add a little bit of comedy, <laughs> well, we don't ha- we don't have a problem with that. I'm not a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so stick around. Uh, we'll be back with the caregiver of the year from the Region Four Area Agency on Aging next. It's 315 now at 94.9 WSJM FM, the news and talk of Michigan's great Southwest. In the spotlight today, the Area Agency on Aging, and now we're talking about their new Caregiver of the Year. Uh, Don Tyler is here, Director of Care Management. Don, will this be now an annual event where you choose a caregiver and a centenarian of the year? Brenda, we're not quite sure if we're going no, to no. continue. This, okay. this was a special 40th, For the 40th. anniversary. Yeah. Um, I so it may just be a one-time deal. He might be our lifetime winner. All right. Well, Carl Stanisowski, Stanis, Stasinowski. No, no, I'm having trouble. Stasinowski is the winner this year from Bridgman. Uh, Christina Rita is here as well, a uh, care manager that works with him through the Area Agency on Aging. Carl, tell us the story uh, of you giving care to your your wonderful wife that you love so much. Well, we started about 27 years ago. That I mean, that's when Millie and, and I first noticed it. She didn't, but our family and that, we noticed it. And then from there on... What did you notice? What did you start noticing 27 years ago? It, well, the story goes, one March, her sisters called up to go with her on a trip to Norway. We were on the phone. I was with the on the phone, too, and there was quite a discussion about it and so forth. That was in March. They went to Norway. We couldn't go. We couldn't afford it. And then in July, they had a family reunion up in Ludington. And you don't mind if I look at you, then I can talk better. Sure. Okay. And uh, we had a family reunion in Ludington. And the two sisters came up to me and said, what's going on? I said, well, what is it? Well, Millie is mad as a hen, at a wet hen. And I said, well, I have no idea. What's the problem? Well, we told her that we went to Norway and she wasn't asked to go with, and so she was mad at us. So that started, I think it started a little bit more because that made me start thinking. About other things. Yes. Yeah. Millie and I were having problems with, yes, you said it. No, I didn't say it. Yes, you said it. No, I didn't say it. Mm-hmm. So we went to the doctor, and the doctor gave us a simple test, physician, and told me he told me, nodded his head. He says, they're starting to have a problem. Is that Alzheimer's? Me? Yes. Is that well, what you're talking about? Or, not def- or deafness? With dementia, and she was dementia. starting to lose her memory. Okay. So we got determined that it was Alzheimer's by a... Uh, neurosurgeon. Okay. Uh, neuro, yeah, that's what that is. Neurologist. Neurologist. And uh, he's confirmed it. He says she's got a, getting the start of what they knew as Alzheimer's at that time. So things were just going along from there, and we ended up here in in uh, Bridgman. Uh, I mean, it's a long story. I'll be here for two hours with you. <laughs> but uh, my dad. But you were determined to keep her at home. I was determined to keep her at home, not for my sake, but because when we got married, we took a vow, both of us, for better or for worse, in sickness or in health. And to me, that meant that I was to take care of her no matter what. And uh, it wasn't easy sometimes. It was really hard. But with the help of Christina... And uh, other people heard that I have a note on, uh, groups and so forth. We were able to make it. Uh, being alone with a person like that, after the first, the last five years were not easy. Yeah. Uh, they were, I don't want to get into having people get into tears. 
I laugh at a lot of the stuff right now, but it's not funny. It wasn't funny. Is she still with us or not? No, Millie has passed on almost two years ago. Okay. Yeah. So So at one point, uh, Christina, you thought it was probably time maybe for some specialized medical care. Yes. When I met Carl, um, Millie was still fairly functional at that point, meaning she could get up from the chair, she could walk around, um, she could still function independently on her own. However, she was demonstrating pretty some severe cognitive deficits that um, go along with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. I remember particularly she missed her dad very much and would talk about going to see her dad, going to see her dad, going to see her dad. Um, We ended up getting Millie involved with adult daycare services, um, which was kind of nice because it allowed her to go to a place where she was supervised and helped and gave her something to do. And it allowed Carl some respite time so that he got a good break Mm -hmm. um, because he was alone in the home taking care of her. And it's a big job um, 24-7. But even when even when Christina said maybe it's time for, you know, for her to go somewhere, you still said no, no. Right. At that point, Millie had kind of progressed and we introduced hospice services in in addition to us and adult daycare. And I remember sitting across the table from one of the hospice social workers and myself, and we're, we both said, you know, Carl, I'm not sure you can do this. Here's some other services that area agency offers, meaning he wouldn't lose us, but maybe that he could have better quality time with her and not so much having to worry about taking care of her so that he could go and, and he said, absolutely not. And that's when he told me I made this vow. I'm going to follow through with my vow. And he was absolutely right. And so we coordinated a lot of services um, between the Area Agency on Aging, hospice services, and adult daycare, and church members, a lot of church members, volunteers, friends, that all participated in keeping her at home. Wow, that's a wonderful story. We need to take another break, but we'll be back in just a moment. And we'll wrap things up today with Christina and Carl, the caregiver of the year for the Region 4 Area Agency on Aging. Anytime you hear a car dealer say, come on. Your News Center 16 forecast today. There'll be a chance of light snow today, this afternoon yet. Our high temperature today is scheduled at 23 Uh, We're kind of down from that now at 18. Tonight, cloudy, more snow coming in, increasing overnight in our lake effect snow areas with a low of 17. Uh, And uh, so I guess temperature is going to stay about the same now until tomorrow. Cloudy with blowing and drifting snow tomorrow, high of only 20. And then Sunday, it'll be colder, some more light snow possible, and a high of 7, 7 degrees. It is 325 now at WSJM FM. 94.9 94.9 radio you can depend on in the spotlight today it's the region four area agency on aging and we are talking to the two special award winners for the 40th anniversary celebration of the area agency the caregiver of the year and in a few minutes the centenarian of the year the caregiver of the year this year is carl stazanowski from bridgman and uh, his care manager from the area agency is christina rita uh, so, Carl, I understand that you stay very involved now with the, with the agency, correct? Yes, I do. What are some of the things that, that you still do? Well, I try to promote, uh, I am trying to promote for them to have classes for women that have to deal with men that have Alzheimer's. They have them for the other way around, women for men, but there's no help for them in as far as the men are concerned. Mm-hmm. Men are totally different uh, for a lot of reasons. Don't I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, the area, the um, Alzheimer's Association has meetings mm-hmm. every Monday. at uh, uh, Mondays once a month, every Tuesday at the Stephenville Library. Is it like a support group? Yes. Okay. Was that and, pretty uh, important to you? Why it, support groups? It was and it still is because I find now that about 40% of the people that come there are women that have to take care of men. All right? mm-hmm. And so what I'm trying to do is get them to have classes. I don't know if they can do it. Uh, it's not going to be an easy thing because men are so easy to deal with. 
Oh, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christina, you were saying during the break that there are several other things that uh, that Carl does to help advocate for the agency, right? Correct. Um, when Millie passed away... His um, wife? Yes. A lot of times that kind of ends our relationship. However, I knew that Carl was a very well-educated, very well-spoken man, and that he was very passionate about the way that he felt. And um, we do a lot of legislative work, a lot of legislative advocacy, and I felt that he would be a strong voice to hear because he's been on the other side of receiving services and why it's so important. Mm -hmm. So we've had him talk to some legislators for us. Um, He comes to our community or our um, consumers advisory panel, um, being a consumer of area agency, so that we can get some feedback for him. Um, He also follows through with some of our evidence-based programs that we teach, a PATH class, um, a a creating confident caregivers class, um, different classes like that, as long as long also with the Alzheimer's Association um, that he is a strong advocate for. And he often sends people our way. He'll identify people in the community and say, you know, I went through something similar to this. This is where I found some help. Perhaps they can help you. So he gives lots of referrals, too. Lots of referrals, but he's just a strong, strong voice in our community. Carl, I'm sure that you have many wonderful uh, and touching and funny stories from all the years that you spent with your wife that you love so much. I know you said that you have another story that you want to share. Well, there's just one that I want to tell because it's it's funny now. I laugh now. Now, now it's funny. But uh, Christina touched on it, and Millie was always for her mother and dad yeah. and they were both passed on and we were sitting there in Bridgman this is at two o'clock in the morning and she says I'm going to go home and I says well you can't go home I says home is in Ludington that's a long ways to go and she says no it's right outside I says no it's not yes it is well it was 10 above zero that day and this is at two in the morning and she's running back and forth telling me she's going home so I thought, well, I'm going to be a smart aleck. And I opened up the back door and said, go. Now, she was always wanting the heat. Forget about the cold, okay? Yeah. And surprised me when I opened the door and she walked out into two feet of snow and kept <laughs> kept running. Kept going. She, she, she wanted she to go saw, home. She saw me. She kept running even more. <gasps> so she went over on one side of the house and I went over there and she saw me coming and she took off. And fell down between two trees. Oh. So I had to go over and pick her up. And I said, i got to get you up. She said, I can't get up. I said, you have to get up. Because otherwise they're going to throw me in jail and put you in a, in a home. <laughs> and but So you got to get up. So she tried to get up. And she got up. And we got her back in and brought her back to the house. Laid her down in bed and she fell asleep. And then she forgot about trying to go home in the snow. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. At least for that yeah. time, anyway. Yeah. Well, so. Carl, I, I understand that you contacted your, your whole fan base and told them that you were going to be changing the face of radio today, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, right. I'll tell you, he has a great face for radio, everybody. Don't, don't, no. don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell him how big my head is. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Well, I'll tell you, it's been really nice having you here today, Carl Stasinowski. And uh, who do you want to say hello to today, since all your fans are listening? Oh, I don't want to pick anybody special. Oh, okay. Just everybody. I love every one of you folks. And that's the reason I sent out this email, Facebook and everything. So you won't be saying to me, how come I missed out on it? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what? For the people that do that. Tell them they can listen to the podcast, okay? And during the break here, I'll tell you how to find that. Okay. Well, I'll tell the listeners right now, too. uh, Just go to the downloads page at WSJM.com, and you can get a download of the program. And generally, they leave each show up for about a week, week and a half, maybe even two weeks. Uh, You can email that. You can can download it. Uh, If you have a Facebook page, Carl, you can even put it on your Facebook. How about that? Oh, boy. Now my head is really good. Okay. (laughs) Well, you have been such a delight. Thank you, and congratulations on this award. Sounds like very, very well-deserved. Thank you.
All Thank right. You. And also thanks to Christina Rita for coming along with Carl today. We appreciate all the help that you gave to uh, to him as a caregiver and, of course, to his wife as well. And this is just one of many stories that would be just like this, I'm sure, from uh, other people who get help uh, from the Area Agency on Aging. We're going to take a break, and the centenarian of the year is also here today when we continue in the spotlight on WSJM.